Today, we are going to learn how to cook and eat rabbit. Now, as you may imagine, cooking such a furry and geometrically complex creature poses many problems for a novice chef, but fear not. We are going to overcome these challenges using the best tool in our kitchen, a process we call cognitive dominion. Now, while this may be my first time cooking a rabbit, you can bet I'm gonna crush it. Now there are many reasons why you may want to cook and eat a rabbit. You may want to show your husband just how bat crap crazy you can be so he settles back down into his lazy dude recliner and shuts his damn pie hole. Or you may just like the taste of soft pink bunny flesh. Either way, let's get started, shall we? So the first step to cooking a rabbit is heating the water to a boiling 240 degrees Fahrenheit. In centigrade, that's, um, well, that's pretty hot. <laughs> now, there are two reasons why you need to have the water this hot. The first is because of the prickly little whiskers. See, rabbits live underground and they use the whiskers so they can see. Rabbits live in burrows. Yup, just like in New York. The borough of Manhattan, borough of Queens, borough of Brooklyn, etc. So, the bunnies live in these underground burrows and they use their whiskers to feel around. And in the bunny burrow, there's a main street. And then on to one side, there's like a nursery. And on the other side, there's like a bunny barber who nibbles at your fur, gets away unwanted hair, and fluffs your cottontail. Further down the main street is where the bunny governor lives. And across the way is where they manufacture all of the weapons for the eventual overthrow of humanity. So, that's the deal with the bunny whiskers. The other reason to heat the water to 240 degrees is simple physics. You see, water is made up of molecules, and molecules bounce around and run into each other like root shoppers on Black Friday. Now, when the molecules get heated up, they start to dance, and they get faster and faster, and they dance faster and faster, and they twirl around like whirling dervishes, and then, they get so fast and so crazy that they just go mad and they turn into steam and they burst out of the pot. Now, these dancing molecules turn to steam at precisely 212 degrees. So you may be wondering, hey Ernestine, if water turns to steam at 212 degrees, then how do I get my boiling water to 240 degrees to cook the rabbit? Good question. Lean closer, I'll tell you a secret. You don't! Why on earth would you want to kill a tiny little beautiful rabbit and then eat it? What are you, a monster? You don't do that! Now, when confronted with a daunting task, we overcome the loathing and trepidation with a process we call Cognitive dominion. So, here we go. Once the water gets to boiling, you pour the boiling water into a jello mold of a bunny, like so. And then you chill it. Now the mold will expand over time as it's chilling. And eventually, you will have a delicious mold of bunny gelatin that you can devour. Then you take your fork and you eat the entire bunny, whiskers and all. Mmm. Tastes like bunny brains. It's kind of like tapioca. But good. Delicious. I hope this has been a helpful guide for you and you've been able to learn the process of cognitive dominion. With the help of cognitive dominion, may your first time too be a victorious one. I'm gonna eat more.